Mushroom Wonderland. How's it going everybody? Aaron Hilliard here, Mushroom Wonderland. Thanks for joining the channel. Thanks for hitting subscribe. We're going to get into a series right now of videos about introduction to mushrooms for beginners. We're going to start at the basics of what exactly is a mushroom before we can learn to identify one. It helps to know just what mushrooms are and how they behave so that we can get an idea of where they might be growing. I am the creator of Mushroom Wonderland. I'm also a member of Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society. I'm also curator of the Mushroom Wonderland page on Instagram, and I've been picking mushrooms for over 30 years. I am a board member at the Mycological Society, and I just love mushrooms. So let's start at the very beginning. What is a mushroom? I think everybody has an idea of what a mushroom is. You see them in the grocery store, you find them in your food, you know, we eat mushroom, we see them growing in parks and in the forest. Maybe you're here watching this video because you want the culinary value of them, you wanna eat wild edible mushrooms. Maybe you've just got this weird nerdy compulsion to understand mushrooms. Maybe you're just bored and you're trying to learn something new. We're gonna keep it really basic for beginners. So firstly, what is a mushroom? A mushroom is that fleshy thing with the stem and the cap that's growing on the forest floor or on a tree that everybody recognizes. And that is actually the fruit of the mycelium, which is the body of the mushroom. So it's a little bit like a plant, but not quite. Mushrooms actually have their own kingdom. Uh, they're not plants and they're not animals. Fungi is its own kingdom in taxonomy. So mushrooms are not quite animals and they're not quite plants. They act a little bit more like animals with the way that they feed, but they act a little more like plants because they are not sentient. They grow in one spot and they are subject to damage from nature and its surrounding environment. Let's talk about the two basic types of mushrooms. We have saprotrophic mushrooms, which are decayers, and these mushrooms eat dead matter, they eat dead leaves, they eat dead wood, and they just munch away. They even can eat dead animals. And then we have mycorrhizal mushrooms, and these kind of mushrooms grow in association with trees and plants, mainly trees, and especially here in the Pacific Northwest, they grow with a lot of trees, mostly conifer trees. Some of the mushrooms that you could find in the mycorrhizae family is going to be the amanitas, the bolites, chanterelles, lobster mushroom, matsutake, morels. Some of the most popular edible wild mushrooms are mycorrhizal mushrooms. This is a word that you should be familiar with. Mycorrhizal means that they grow in association with trees. They will not grow where there isn't live trees. Like I mentioned before, mushrooms grow from mycelium and this is the body of the fungus grows underground and that whole network is called a mycelium. It's like a weaving mat of these little strands of life that run underneath the forest floor where you can't see them. And when it comes time for them to fruit then they burst out of the forest floor and they create these fruiting bodies that we know as mushrooms. So if you were to take the illustration of a blackberry and think about how that grows, that whole plant grows above ground, but it has tendrils, it has individual vines that grow off of it, and there are smaller vines that grow off of those. And at the ends of those vines, when it's the right time of year and the moisture is right, then they fruit and they produce blackberries. And inside those blackberries is a seed, and that seed is there to start a new organism, a new plant. Berries have a unique thing going on because animals and humans eat the berries and then they carry their seed quite a ways until they can deposit their seed. And then the seed can pop up again a mile or two later from the mother plant. It's a good survival mechanism for plants. Mushrooms are actually the fruit of the mycelium and within the mushroom, it's not quite a seed, but you could think of it that way. It's actually called a spore. And the spore is a microscopic airborne mushroom seed, if you will. With every air disturbance, thousands of these spores go flying out into the forest and they land on everything. And they need really specific environment and moisture and carbon dioxide levels and everything they need to grow. Another interesting thing about spores is that in the animal and often in the plant kingdom, there are biologically and scientifically two different genders. There's male and there's female, and then they get together to reproduce and make a new organism. But in the mushroom world, there's over 1,200 different genders that can be compatible to make a new mycelium. When these two different cells of the spores connect and they start to grow a new mycelium, it will creep through the forest floor and each little strand grows one cell at a time. And these strands are called hyphae. 
and a whole bunch of hyphae connected together into one mass is called the mycelium. And one time a year, just like with plants, these mushrooms will try to reproduce, create new seed, so they will create fruiting bodies, and then the spores can be sent out into the forest to regenerate the cycle all over again. So once you understand these mycorrhizal connections between trees and mushrooms, we've got to make the distinction between what is a conifer and what is a hardwood tree, right? There's deciduous and there's coniferous trees, and I think you probably learned that because you went to third grade. But just as a recap, let's have a look at what a conifer actually is. These are conifer trees. They grow needles, they have really rough bark, and they are green 24 seven. So that's why they are called evergreen. They are forever have green on them. Whereas a hardwood like this alder tree is actually got leaves on it and the leaves fall off in autumn. And this is how you can tell if a tree is deciduous or not. Here in the Northwest, most of our mycorrhizal mushrooms associate with conifer trees, with these trees with the needles, the evergreens are really what we're looking for. Well, making the distinction between the saprotrophic mushroom and the mycorrhizal mushroom is gonna make finding them a lot easier. Some saprotrophic mushrooms like the agaricus mushroom or the chlorophyllum species, they are not growing in association with any particular tree. They just happen to pop up when they find something that they like to eat. And so this makes them a little bit trickier to find. You come across them, and then you can identify them and pick them, but it's harder to go set out looking for those specific mushrooms. Another thing you should know about mycelium is that it's growing here underground all year round. Sometimes for years, it'll be growing in the same place. So this underground network of fibers is growing right here underneath this moss. I guarantee there's several types of fungi growing underneath here. And during the summer months, it's growing and it is bone dry out here in the beginning of September, but the mycelium is still very much alive. Now around here, when the heavy rains start to pour down at the end of this month or in the beginning of October, what's gonna happen is it's gonna saturate that mycelial mat under here. It's gonna stimulate it to fruit and then mushrooms are gonna pop up. I would be willing to bet that some mushrooms are gonna fruit right in this area and I'm standing on top of a mycelial mat. So this mycelium is alive and healthy and it's just awaiting the right time for the rain to hit and the temperature to get just right so that it will produce fruit, much like a blackberry bush will produce fruit at the end of the summer. How do we differentiate the mushrooms from each other? There are identifying characteristics or keys as what is called in the identification world. What color is the mushroom? What does the cap look like? How tall is it? How big around is it? And then looking underneath the top of the cap, you've got gills like Lepista nuda or the Agaricus augustus mushroom. These are gills that you would see on the common button mushroom in the grocery store. Or you could have veins like on a chanterelle or a pig's ear, which is a gomphus clavidus. These mushrooms have what are called veins and they run down the stem. There's also poured mushrooms like bolete mushrooms like the porcini, uh, the Aeroboletus mirabilis or the Admirable Bolete. These are a class of mushrooms that can be very tasty and they look like a sponge on the underneath side of them. There are polypores that are like the red belted conch, the tree shelf conchs that you see growing on the sides of trees. These mushrooms are known as polypores because they actually have tiny little pores on a very hard surface underneath the mushroom. So considering some of these keys, all the identification guides that I have is gonna have keys of identification. We're gonna look for a diameter of the cap. Is it convex or is it concave? We're gonna look for, does it have gills or veins or pores? We're gonna look for color. We're gonna look for texture, sliminess, odor. There's a lot of different things. These keys are gonna be the ticket to identification with a field guide. So I would suggest one of the first things you do is get a field guide, read the first couple of chapters and it's gonna explain a lot of what I've already explained but it's gonna help you to understand how the keys in that particular book work and it will help make it easier for you to identify certain types of mushrooms. Another thing that you probably know about mushrooms is that some of them are poisonous and some of them are not. And you need to know the difference between these mushrooms. That is another really important reason why we identify mushrooms is to find out which ones are poisonous, which ones are not, which ones you can eat, which ones will make you hallucinate, which ones are gonna send you to the hospital or the funeral home. These are all important things to know 
when going out to gather mushrooms. It's just as valuable to know your poisonous mushrooms as it is to know the good ones to eat. Before you go and indulge and eat a whole bunch of mushrooms, make sure that it's not gonna upset your stomach. Also to be noted, mushrooms need to be cooked, okay? I know stepmom used to put them raw in the salad and that's okay, nobody ever got sick or at least pinpointed that it was from the mushrooms in the salad, but these mushrooms have no nutritional value until they're cooked. The cell wall of the mushroom needs to be cooked in order to break down for humans to digest it. So not only could it kill off some enzymes that would give you gastric upset, but you can't derive any nutritional value from a mushroom until it is cooked. So make sure to cook your mushrooms, all mushrooms, even store-bought mushrooms need to be cooked. All right, so there's been a lot of talking in this video and thanks for bearing with that, but this is the basics of mushrooms and you kind of need to know this stuff in order to start going out and foraging and identifying mushrooms. So firstly, we're gonna need to know that a mushroom is the fruiting body of the mycelium, okay? The mycelium, this is a word that you should know. Mycelium means the body of the fungus. Fungi is its own kingdom in taxonomy. It's not a plant, it's not an animal. Remember that, it's good trivia. A couple of more technical terms that you might wanna know is saprotrophic, and this is a decomposing mushroom. Or we have mycorrhizal, which is a symbiotic mushroom that grows with trees around here in the Pacific Northwest. You should also know the difference between gills and pores and veins. These are all identifiers underneath the cap of a mushroom. It's gonna help you to identify just what that mushroom is, or at least give you a head start. You gotta know the difference between the cap and the stem and that there's a ring sometimes on that stem. You also need to know the word subscribe because that's what you should do to this channel and the like button is the little thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that and leave a comment, if you will, for ideas on more videos. Hit that notification bell for the next video in this series that's gonna be about understanding mushrooms as we gear up for autumn here in the Pacific Northwest. Never a better time to be out picking mushrooms and I got a feeling this is gonna be a good year, autumn 2021. So come along, thank you for watching.